What up YouTube, Nathan Heights here. Thank you guys for tuning in. I want to start this video by thanking everybody a million times. Thank you for this platform that you guys have helped me build slowly. When I first started YouTube, I only planned on getting a thousand subscribers. Now we're almost hitting 3,000, which is a blessing and it is much appreciated. So the purpose of this video is to start a discussion. I would like to hear what you guys have to say about what you believe a uh, belief in God entails or who God is, what God is, and really just how do you rationalize your idea of God. Personally, where I stand spiritually, I feel that a belief in some kind of higher power or ultimate authority is necessary in order to live a productive and all-around peaceful life. I believe that religious ideas protect us from philosophies such as nihilism, the belief that Basically life is meaningless and you should just get as much as you can out of life while you're here because when you're gone You're gone and everything everything else aside from that is pointless basically be as selfish as you want Because when you're gone, you're gone. This life is for you to enjoy and experience with pleasure Now personally my belief in God at the moment has evolved from a Christian worldview to a Jehovah's Witness worldview back to a Christian worldview to an atheistic worldview to a somewhat Buddhist worldview back to an atheistic worldview and where I currently stand I am currently studying uh, some Hindu philosophy I'm reading the Bhagavad Gita which in my opinion is very much like Buddhism but for me it's a little more profound I've been reading some psychology books, particularly books by Jordan B. Peterson, One Maps of Meaning and the other one, Twelve Rules for Life, but Twelve Rules for Life isn't as, as applicable to this discussion, but Maps of Meaning helps you understand mythology and just uh, human nature and how we process stories and myths and why they're so important to us. Now these, these theories on stories and myths and why they're passed down are rooted in Jungian philosophies, Jungian uh, psychology, the idea of the archetypes, the idea of these distilled uh, sort of symbolic representations of ideas which, ex which are pre-existent in our minds and are passed down from generation to generation. And uh, these archetypal uh, ideas are basically psychological substructures, psychological st structures in cognition, in reality, which can't be seen with the naked eye. So in the same way that we have body parts, such as arms, a stomach, lungs, etc., we also have these, for lack of a better term, psychological organs. And for me, I believe that the idea of God, this is my current belief, it could easily change. The idea of God is rooted in these psychological structures, these sort of organs which exist in our consciousness which cannot be seen. And this would explain why these stories are so profound and so touching across generations. This would explain why we tend to have these myths which grow and are taken so seriously and are so inspirational for people across centuries. Now these myths, these characters in these myths are as real as consciousness is. So they might not exist in the physical realm, but they exist in that realm which cannot be seen. And in my opinion, Hinduism is aligned with a lot of these Jungian type ideas because basically Hinduism believes that all religious paths are valid. And this would make sense because each god it has a slightly different flavor. The, the gods in Hinduism, there, there are many different gods. Christianity has a god, right? You can go, go across the board. There's, there's just different religious ideas who people pray to, uh, people worship, and they have those feelings of the Holy Spirit, for lack of a better term. And I think this can be explained by Jungian, uh, Jungian ideas on psychology and mythology and archetypal uh, symbolism. So the ideas in Hinduism so far which I find of particular interest are the idea that all religions lead to the same path, that they all lead to a sort of enlightenment, 
although it does hold that Hinduism is like the ultimate authority. It also holds that life overall is purposeless, that there is no good and bad in the purest sense, that life, there's no purpose to life. The purpose is simply to live life, to live in the moment, and to basically, whatever you're doing, function in that position to the absolute best of your ability. So if you're a garbage man, be the best dang garbage man you can in the moment without setting goals, without planning for the future, without striving, because when you plan, you develop these desires and basically you're never truly living because you're not in the present. You're always thinking about the future. You're always aiming at something and you're basically living behind your goals. So you're never actually present and you're next, never actually uh, quote unquote enlightened. You're just simply always striving, always uh, in a state of anxiety, trying to uh, achieve something which may, which you may or may not be able to achieve. Uh, one idea that that is talked about in some interpretations of the Bhagavad Gita is the idea that you cannot control your heartbeat, you cannot control your breath. So stop trying to control the world. And yes, although I do recognize we have influence over the world. Overall, uh, everything is pointless because you are going to die and you aren't going to be able to take anything with you. So according to Hinduism, my understanding so far, basically live in the moment, do the best you can, as nature would, right? As, as a, a river flows, right? As water, a stream comes down a mountain. You know, it, it falls and it drops and, and, it, and it goes along with gravity and it, and it makes its course, right? Whether the, if there's a dam, it's going to go around it. It's just going to flow naturally with, with, with whatever is there, but it is going to flow. That same idea, which is kind of a Taoist idea, is applied to humanity and humans. Basically, we act with whatever cards are dealt to us to the best of our ability. And by being in the moment, the present moment, we get to actually live life and enjoy life. And that is the entire uh, meaning of life. And that's how you find meaning in life. There's also these ideas of, you know, interconnectedness, which are also very, uh, which, which for me hit close to home. It's that non-dualistic type worldview. The idea that I am that, the idea that, uh, Everything is one and in my mind when you look at consciousness It's just it's so profound. It's so incomprehensible unexplainable that an idea like this could could kind of be rationalized, right? I mean for something so complicated and so unexplainable and just out of the reach of science um, It's rather consistent right across spe uh, not across species, but across uh, human beings so a part of me looks at it like there's this thing called consciousness, right? And we're all, we're all connected to it, right? As opposed to just like, we're all individuals experiencing consciousness. And this is kind of, as far as my understanding is concerned, this is kind of the rationalization for, for, um, for like rebirth, right? For the idea that, uh, that we never die, that we simply manifest in a new form when we die. And the explanation for this can kind of be explained with science, right? I mean, energy is never destroyed. It simply changes forms. And that's kind of the idea behind, you know, uh, I forget, I'm forgetting the word right now, but basically the rebirth uh, after death, um, just that continuous cycle of being born again. Anyways, I want to know what you guys think. If you guys think that this is a bunch of hoobla, uh, let me know. Uh, I'm honestly curious. I'm, I'm along this path just like many of you. I'm simply trying to understand the incomprehensible. Uh, go ahead and leave a comment in the description and I hope to start a discussion. Peace. Nos vemos pronto.